Hello and welcome to New Game Plus. You're watching us on C31 in Melbourne or online on YouTube. My name is Jack and usually Jason's behind the desk, but I've come down from Queensland to take over the show once again. Not the first time, won't be the last. Um, we've got a lot coming up in this week's show. We're going to be chatting Final Fantasy XII, Final Fantasy VII Remake, as well as uh, sort of a deeper dive into the games that we're looking forward to coming out later this year. But first, something completely different. A few weeks ago on the show, we spoke about how you can now check out New Game Plus podcasts by going to newgameplus.tv or our SoundCloud account and see what Jason and Dami and some of the other guys have been doing as far as podcasts are concerned. But you might not also know that I do a completely separate podcast from New Game Plus. It's called Zed Games. It's produced at 4 Z Studios, a radio studio here in Brisbane. And we're producing that radio show every single week. So we bring you the best in-gaming news, reviews, community and culture every single week. We're also live on 102.1 FM in Brisbane or online at 4 zorgau from 6 till 7 every Wednesday night. So you can check us out there if you're wanting more gaming goodness than Jason and Dami can put out through the podcast or through the TV show or through YouTube. We make a lot of, a, a lot of content, guys, at this point. I don't know why you need more content, but it's there if you want it. You can head to zgamesau.net, the website. You can find Zed Games on iTunes and Spotify, and you can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at ZED Games AU. Definitely check out the podcast. Highly recommended. So Final Fantasy XII came out on the PS2 in, I think it was 2006. So this was right at the very end of the PS2 life cycle, and it really shows. If you go back to Final Fantasy XII on the PS2, it looks gorgeous as far as the voice acting. It's one of the more competent voice acted games as far as acting goes, and writing actually, on the PS2. And the gameplay feels pretty mature, especially after a lot of other games, JRPGs, on the PS2. Fast forward years and years after every other Final Fantasy game gets a remaster, not Final Fantasy XII, I'm not bitter, I swear, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age was released on PS4. This is a while ago now, and it's since come to Xbox One and Switch. As far as how the game holds up, I honestly think that it is one of the most contemporary older Final Fantasy games that you can play. That might sound a little bit mixed, but bear with me. The gameplay is Pretty mature. You've got the ATB system from earlier Final Fantasy games, but it's more in the vein of like an MMO RPG kind of setting. As far as sort of supplementary systems in the license system and the Gambit system, they've also kind of been changed up a little bit as well in the Switch version. So if you played it originally on the PS2, you had this massive license board that you could kind of uh, spec your characters however you wanted. In the Zodiac Age, you choose a class for each individual character and they have their own board. So they go through their own skill progression in a little bit more of a linear way, but it means that you don't just have everyone being OP at everything by the end of the game. As far as the Gambit system goes, it gives you options as far as AI basically programming your characters in the game. So you can have multiple decks, so a dungeon build and then a boss build. Now I've brought on Jamie and Cardi as well. To talk about Final Fantasy XII, as far as the story and as far as kind of the world in Final Fantasy XII, you've played quite a fair bit of this as well, Yes, Jamie. that's correct, I, I have. I feel like it holds up pretty well I now. love, so it's set in the world of Evil East, which if you've played a bunch of the spin-offs games, it's the same world as Tactics, the same world as Vagrant Story. It's a very specific vibe where it's all very much I want to say it's kind of very Victorian, very kind of that kind of style of it's yes. a very real specific vibe. And it's, yeah, sure, it's a little Star Wars, it's a little Lord of the Rings, I get that. But this is something about the way the voice acting is delivered, the way that everyone speaks, the way the world is crafted, that it doesn't feel like any other Final Fantasy game. Yeah. It's such a bizarre, well-defined world that I honestly adore it. Like, every time I see a cutscene, I just want to... For, for a Final Fantasy game, we saw a, game, a series that has always been weird with stories, so I was like, I want to see everything here because I love it so much. And I feel like this was kind of on the tipping point of when we saw Square Enix um, move towards more like Western influences as well, like Star Wars you mentioned as well. I mm -hmm. feel like that has a big impact. But Final Fantasy XII on Switch also looks a little bit different because you played it on PS4. PC and PS4. On PS, PC and PS4. It looks good on pretty much all of the platforms. Like, mm. it has aged incredibly well. Like, it's a game that's always, like, even the PS2 game still looks really good today. And the fact of the matter is, you're taking this with you and it's a competent port. Yeah. It's like, holy crap, this isn't black magic. How are you doing this? There's a lot of sort of smaller um, quality of life improvements as well, I think, mm. um, that make it a lot better. And 
Also, the, the changes as far as the Zodiac system goes, that makes it worthwhile. If you played Final Fantasy XII way back on the PS2, that there's new stuff here for you to jump into yeah, as well. Yeah, and it's actually specific because what we got is basically a remastered version of a PS2 upgraded version, yes. which changes a lot of stuff. And what we get basically allows you to kind of also, the new versions are like that to respect your jobs. Yeah. So if you don't like where you're going, you can go just respect the entire license board, which is kind of a really big deal. So I guess while we're on the topic of Final Fantasy, I've been playing a lot of FF12. I've been really enjoying it. You've had a good time with it. Mm -hmm. But you want to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, I mean, there's no better time to do it, really. I've been playing a buttload of Final Fantasy VII on my Switch, which is a fantastic console mm. for it. Mm -hmm. But also, there's been recent news, um, especially from, from now until June, E3 time, there's been a, a, a buttload of Final Fantasy VII news. A metric remake. buttload. Yeah, well, I mean, relatively speaking, okay, as in cool. <laughs> a, a one-minute teaser, which is probably yeah. the closest we've gotten since 2015. That's like versus 13 days. Yeah, I, you know, I got my minute. I'm cool with that. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about this because, I mean, Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, is um, what I'd probably constitute a remaster. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII is a complete remake. New assets, new systems, new everything. Yeah. But, and take, but taking the existing story and kind of modernizing it. And modernizing it. The original team's also involved, so you've got Kitase, you've got Nomura um, involved in the project heavily. But I think um, there's been two responses that have come mm. out uh, in regards to fans and, and, and us. Um, the first one is, I am so excited, I can't wait to see the 4K render of Cloud in a dress. And then the other response is, this is absolutely shit. This is awful. Why does it have to be an action RPG? Yeah, well, Why can't it be more a traditional ATB style game? It's always coming from those sort of like more, uh, they, they have the more traditional kind of view where yes. it's like, we want to conserve how it originally was. But you've been playing Final Fantasy VII on the Switch. Yep. And it does have some quality of life improvements. It does have some visual improvements over the PS1 and PC versions. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm very much of the mind that the remake can be completely different exactly. from yeah. the original. Like, the, the fact of the matter is you can go play Final Fantasy VII on your phone. And it's yeah. like, it's toaster, that basically. version basically exists everywhere. It's like, like, that game in particular, it's a 20-year-old game at this point. Like, yeah. it's hard to go back to in a lot of ways. Yeah. Not only in terms of the gameplay, but also in terms of the content. Like, you can't just decide, okay, the content that, that was in a game in 1997 where... The world has changed pretty dramatically in the last bit. 20 years. There, yeah. are, there are a few themes that do fall in line with it. Um, it's, it's got a very anti-corporate and also environmentalist message, mm -hmm. um, which is very relevant today. So I feel that um, it holds a lot of weight even today. Sure, there are elements of it that are quite outdated, but I feel that, um, especially the team in Square Enix in particular, I feel that they can reimagine it in a way that's still relevant today, mm. but can still work their own way. I mean, the original team's involved. Do you really think they're going to spend so much resources and so many assets and so many millions upon millions of yen, oh, sorry, trillions, mm -hmm. um, yeah. on the same game using the same source code? Absolutely not. And I, I think there's also something to be said for trying to make it accessible to a new audience, right? Like mm, Final really? Fantasy VII on the Switch or on your phone or on PC, like it's, be, it's, it's been improved over the original. So if you played it originally on the PS1, you can mm -hmm. go back to it. But there's a whole generation of people that have not played Final Fantasy VII. Some would argue is one of the most influential JRPGs in history. Pretty much. I'm not going to disagree with that. I think that there's something to be said in making the maybe some dialogue choices, maybe some sort of um, aesthetic choices a little bit more palatable to a modern audience. Exactly. Yeah. I would agree with that. So, a few weeks ago, we spoke about some of the games that we're looking forward to. We also spent about seven years on karaoke songs that we don't like to sing because we're all sad boys and girls on New Game Plus. I thought that we could go into a little bit more detail on the games because this is called New Game Plus. So, I'm joined with Meg and Jason. <laughs> and you dragged me back for this. Yeah, you just deserve it. Just to be clear, it. that mailbox segment was the first of its kind and it was a success. Everyone loved it. Oh, it wasn't. I mean, Chen Except and I did Except me last reminiscing year. about songs I hate. Yeah. But here we are to talk about the games we didn't get a chance to really elaborate on when we started last week. I, like I said last week, I think the big issue is there's still, like, nobody's announced their Christmas games because they're waiting for E3, because yeah. they're going to go, oh, by the way, we've got a console coming in, but don't run out too quickly. But, I mean, the Gears 5 thing's a pretty good solid leak. I don't know if you saw that recently. No, I haven't yet. They're like 20th of September or something like yeah, that. There's a cover that's been online. See, like I say, like, my biggest thing before, the lead up to E3, you say leak, I say intentional marketing yeah, strategy yeah. to yeah. have Especially their own limelight before true. E3, and that breaks my heart. Like, yeah. <laughs> is, there any, is there no surprises in the games industry no. anymore? I mean, Most often the kings are that, and whether it's the fact that they have these slack practices that they don't change or that they use those kind of like 
absolutely like 100% intentional leaks, which I, I get that is purely an assertion and not a statement of fact. Yeah. But yeah, they are the kings of it. But it works for them. Everyone mm -hmm. still like shows up. Phil Spencer shows up and he does his thumb points and yeah. everyone like is super king. Yeah. I have really high expectations for E3 this year. I do every year, but I don't think like besides uh, there's a couple of titles that are definitely going to get some airtime, but yeah. if they don't announce an Animal Crossing, See? the whole world yep. is going to cry. Yeah. I know that you're hype as hell for it. Yeah. Like, I get like, I am as well, but a lot of the E3 stuff, like I'm hyped for E3, yeah. I get why. And we're actually going to be doing a uh, focus on, I guess, how to cover E3, E3 yeah. Crash Course yeah. later on, right? So that's coming. For now, though, we do have some games that have been confirmed as coming out. And I have a list. I made sure I got my yeah. list together before we, before we started this. That's mm -hmm. what the phone's on the table for. I'm not unprofessional, I swear to God. Um, <laughs> I have some, because we were talking before we started recording, there are some games that are not going to be the big ones that kind of everyone's blown away by, but they're good sort of fillers in the calendar because you kind of need to have games to keep coming out to keep people entertained. That's right. If you haven't finished your backlog, that, that is. So, well, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm never going to at this point. Ones for me that kind of fill that void, Crash Team Racing. Yes. Which, look, I, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I was, a, I was a Sony kid. I was a PlayStation kid. Crash and Spyro. Spyro right. doesn't crash. You're wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so that's a good one. Catherine Full Body. I'm a little bit on the fences about whether this is like a calendar filler for me. It's going to be, like, I think it's going to be huge. I think a lot of people are talking about yeah. it. They're extremely excited for the reboot. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting because obviously there was the, the controversy with the people because it's been out in Japan for a while. Yes. And so there was a bit of controversy around some of the translation. Uh, I think it was taken a little bit out of context, as always the case for that kind of thing. It also but, blew out of proportion. At the time, it was before the game released yes. and people were making a lot of assumptions. That has since oh, sort of... Assumptions on Twitter. Oh, who would have guessed? Oh, but it's, it's, it's since crazy. been resolved in some capacity. Yeah. So now it's more of a focus on what the game is going to be yeah. like and whether... Because, like, for me, Catherine is about the Persona visual novel stuff that yeah. Persona's always done so great. Without the Persona As opposed RPG, to the edge loading, yeah. Well, without the dungeon edge. crawling, because the... Edge. 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 The bloat of the RPG always yeah. gets me out of Persona 10, 15 yeah, hours. I can't, yep. I can't deal. It's going to um, get myself, for sure. Some other kind of... Filler games, Crystal Chronicles. I'm hype as hell for it. I'm so keen for this Fanboy, re release. What's up? Oh my god! <laughs> um, and then also Link's Awakening, uh, Legend of Zelda. I think that that's come a this really year. cool story. Because wasn't there like an indie studio that like pitched it to Nintendo and they just were blown away by the graphic style? I also, heard. It. I mean, maybe the case was you know. It yeah. Just, it just the problem is it just reminds me of like you remember was it on Wii U on Nintendo Land when they were doing like the little uh, Zelda yeah. adventures? It just reminds me of that. And I'm like, what's wrong with that? I didn't say there was anything wrong with it. I'm just saying it just reminds me of that real heavily. And I'm like. It's it's a good game enough, and as long as they don't change like kind of story elements, but I think you'll find they're going to start slowly retconning stuff. I think that's this is, they're going to take their chance with these re-releases to kind mm -hmm. of oh you know how they said this in the old game no. they don't say that anymore. It's like I just watched like you know Hyrule encyclopedia we websites were, go mental. We were talking about that earlier, and Matt was like, they better not retcon the part where Cloud and Sephiroth kiss. Oh, that's spoilers. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Let's move on to Big Boys. Let's move on to Big <laughs> Boys. He's opened up his fic folder. That's fine. We, <laughs> I <I've> hide that. <laughs> you guys have recently seen Detective Pikachu, am I yes. right? Uh, we're riding Very the good. we're riding the Pokemon hype train right now, and yeah. I think we haven't really touched on the new Sword and Shield game coming out. And, and gun, gun. and gun. Yeah, that's it the keeps meme. coming up. I think that's going to be massive, and yeah. I think people out there are still playing Pokemon Go. I think that's really still so on the upwards for a Pokemon trajectory. Game, it's been like, and obviously they trickle out information as, as Pokemon are want to do, and they still know they're going to sell ten million copies, so they're not too Easy. worried. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. they've actually confirmed that it's not going to be anything like Pokemon Go. It's going to be its own IP yeah, in terms of yeah. gameplay. It's going well, to be it'd, refreshing. It'd, it'd follow on. It'd be closer to a Sun and Moon, I feel, mm. over a Let's Go. And yeah, I feel yeah. like that's kind of what people want to get back to. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, let, let's Go is normally bait, let's be real. And that's fine, like, introduce kids to Kanto. It sells hardware, because yeah. they're not bringing out a revision this year, are they? Yeah, we'll get to that uh, later. Uh, it, it's fine enough there's a Pokemon game. I mean, it, it was it was always due, like, to have a, a proper one that's kind of a canonical one, yeah. I guess, you know right. what I mean? Um, but, um, yeah, it's interesting, because, like, you better be able to take Pikachu trying to figure out which um, kind of timeline canon that takes place in. Like, it's got to be the video game canon. Yeah. Like, it has to be. Mm -hmm. So it's that weird kind of thing of, now they've got movies that can make it better too. It's like, oh, okay. Right. Cool. Yeah. Very quickly, some other big boys. Any that you're hyped for? Well, Animal Crossing, where's my god damn yeah. Animal Crossing? <laughs> keeps coming I, back. I, just, I finally understand. want a game that makes me want to pay for Nintendo Online. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I really like, want some... They hardcore, they hardcore edged us on it, and then, oh, it's coming in 2019. It's like... 
That's not. Give us some more. What the? F yeah. I want fresh KK slider tracks. I yeah. want some like serious town customization. I want more than the three core actions of digging, fishing, and all that kind of stuff. Like I, 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 I find that because it's three in the morning when I can't sleep. And yeah, I'm like, you want to do some yoga lattes in the main oh, town square. Sh yeah, sh sharks. Are the, this is the best time to catch sharks <laughs> and like zebra fish <laughs> and like but no barred jaws, sure. uh, jackknives. You know what I mean? Like yeah, knife jaws, knife jaws. That's yeah. it. Like. <laughs> It's the best time to do it, and I've set mine. I had like late night ordinance on, so I could sh sell them at all hours of the night. As long as I got in before three o'clock, I'd I'm be so like, glad "Shit, I gotta run!" It'd be like <laughs> running up the stairs, like "Shit, shit, shit!" And then like <laughs> just walk in the door. It's like, and then as you leave, it's shut. And I'm like, "Oh, thank God!" I just <laughs> made my 25k bells. Tom Nook can like piss off for another day. Exactly. Like, Handing my mortgage payment. This is literally <laughs> my life. Like, oh my god. Yeah. In every single way. The, 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 the pelican can be pissed off with me. Like, I don't care. Like, steady. It, it's your fucking job. Just open the door. <laughs> let me in. I'll just pay my bills and I'll leave. Like, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Like, you're on the Animal Crossing couch, and I'm like, I'm just keen for Fire Emblem. What's going on? Yeah, I'm going to yeah, be yeah, sitting yeah. like 2 a.m. Australian time. I'm going to be sitting on my bed in the middle of the night with a box of like tissues ready to cry my eyes out if they don't. They have it. to. They have yeah, to. They can't end just like this. Like, I just can't do it anymore. Edge. Yeah. Edge. Yeah. Yeah, Don't edge yeah. us anymore. Yeah. Bring out Animal Crossing for these two's sake. Thanks. So I came down to Melbourne, mostly for BAM, but also to shoot an episode of New Game Plus. And Jason doesn't shut up about next gen. He is so goddamn hyped for new hardware, the next generation. Nothing matters, God is dead. But I brought him on to talk about it anyway, because he won't leave me alone. He keeps arguing You with dragged me. me in for this. Yeah, like that's You take that's, over that's, my that's show, fair, that's fair. and then drag me back in you for this. You have your drag me back in. Next gen. Yes. So Let's talk about it. Uh, so, uh, like, I mean, it, it is one of those things. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I hate to say I told you so, but as soon as Sony did that thing with, what was it, Wired? Who got the original? Yeah, it was. Got the yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as they did that, I'm like, well, there's your Next proof. gen's been started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so they knew they had to get ahead of Microsoft because Microsoft were going to do Xbox. They knew they haven't got a replacement for their stupid PlayStation experience. Like I say, from a company point of view, Sony's in the most precarious spot it's been in since Matrix handed them a free ball. They got no house. House drove all of that innovation as far as I'm concerned. True. PlayStation yep. Plus. Yep. Like the he took the Matrix like fumble, picked up his and, and we're just gone. Yeah. yeah. So Cuz is gone. Yeah. Like he he retired, retired. He was there uh, for quite a while. He was. The only one who's left from the original kind of OG crew is Sean Layton, and he was always in that kind of background. And he was always a games boy anyway. Yeah, and, and yeah. like PlayStation is still known for games, so yeah. that hasn't changed, but it's but, nothing but new. But I think it's that thing of, I, I, I reckon they're going to fly a bunch of film cucks in and ruin it, because it's, games, gaming's the only part that's oh, been making money for them. And right. that's what they'll do, is they'll, they'll parachute these people in, and they'll go, oh, how can we have these experiences? And I mean, we're already starting to see it with their policy on in China. So um, if you, you need to pass certain censorship, like they, they have a filter, filter system to get onto their store in the first place. Right, yeah. Like, the BL Hub is now a Nintendo Switch. That's the world we live in. The BL Hub I need to get is on Nintendo that, Switch. Dude, I need to get on that Japanese eShop so bad because uh, we haven't got any BL on the Australian eShop. There's e so plenty of it. What are you talking about, mister? I'll send you a link. No, no, there's no, there are VNs, but there's no BL. I've uh, looked okay, for it. Okay, there's okay. a difference. Okay, okay. Um, so, but like, so, but this is what I'm saying. Like, that, that's, so Sony's on there in this weird censorious part. Mm. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's some, they're, they're buying their time and there's going to be some kind of link in with Epic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah I can see I, that. I, I would say that that would probably be the next thing if suddenly Sony announces Tencent board in big. Um, and that would be, into, like, again, that, that's my dark horse. That's you are, my... But you are, like, silver hat on as far as, like, yeah. Tencent buying Epic, buying every... It's Wait for those I'm Chinese millions to come in, I'm and I'm like, you. mate. Like, that, that, <laughs> like, uh, like, that's my, that is my tinfoil hat prediction. Right, but when okay. it comes true, I can come back and say I told you so. Microsoft, <laughs> let's say, this is going to be the inter So talking to people in the industry that I know, yep. right? And one of the main New things... New Game Plus is sources. Uh, one of the main things that comes up a lot is about specifically how um, it's who's going to launch first. So is it going to be Sony into Microsoft? Mm. Is it going to be Microsoft and Sony? The current consensus is that Sony are going to go for Christmas and Microsoft are going to just undercut them, do all, like September or something like that. Because it didn't really matter this generation because they launched, it was like one week Two between them, depending on your region. Yeah. So it was like Xbox launched before in, uh, Sony in one and then vice versa in yeah. another. That didn't really make much of a difference because Microsoft was dead on arrival anyway. Yeah, and that was, again, thank you to that Matrix. That yeah. has changed somehow? I, I, I would say that kind of the main arguments for, for Microsoft at the moment is kind of threefold. Number one, they bought a lot, a lot of good studios. They bought yeah. Obsidian. Yeah. They bought out the guys who did um, State of Decay. That's all they had to say at E3 last year. They were like, look, we know we're not great at exclusives, but we've got new studios. Look at all of our studio names. Yes. Like it was 
slightly better than that Switch slide that they had at yeah, the Switch announcement. Yeah, yeah, where it was like, yeah. we've got 40 partners, and I'm like, that means nothing. Yeah, yeah. Buying studios does actually mean something, but it takes two or three years for that and to And you can tell the, the Switch in strategy. Connect is dead. That was a Matrix baby. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it was that thing of Matrix was, Matrix went on to do Zinger. If that sums up the kind of person he was, he went on to, to work at Zinger. So, um, they're dead now anyway. They're dead, exactly. So it's that thing of, you know, you, you, the, the Phil seems like a genuine bloke. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, as much as, yeah, it's, it's still a CEO, we're all being As genuine as to. he can be in that position, yeah. 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 So he seems like a genuine bloke. He genuinely seems like, and, and a lot of their games, have, they've just been doing, releasing good games. Like, there's no reason you would wait for a Gran Turismo anymore. Forza's better. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. It's not even a but comparison. But then they've got those anymore. diehards and they're like, oh, I love Gran Turismo. I'm like, buy Ridge Racer on PS1. Honestly, Ridge it's better. Racer. It's a better game. It is. So you have this you have this switch backwards compatibility is an amazing piece of engineering like technical engineering the value that adds and they're just giving them away on Game Pass now. So all these great games, they basically. Are. So Game Pass and Gold are going to be And Xbox One Xbox Sad Ultimate. is still yeah. there as well, which is the worst name they could have possibly come yeah. up with. Xbox St One Standalone Sad. Domplex, yeah. S, uh, Xbox One S All Edition. Yeah. All Digital Edition. Sad. Yeah. Um, that obviously hasn't really taken off in Australia. It won't. And um, that's why it didn't come out here, did it? Yeah, you know, it hasn't. Like, it hasn't come out at retail, yeah. at least, um, because one of the major game distributors in <laughs> uh, the world have definitely said, no, we're not selling this thing. Yeah, yeah. I get why. Um, I mean, there was an Austrian uh, retailer that was like, we're not selling Xbox at all. This is years ago. So yeah. it's not the first time. It won't be the last. But that doesn't really impact on their next-gen plans, I think. Yeah. No, I, I, and that is the thing. So we, we kind of have a more standard secession plan from those two. Yeah. The generational jump won't be as big. It'll be similar to what the Xbox One X and PlayStation Pro was. I think that's how it's going to go now. Yeah, like, the, the biggest change that we saw this generation as far as PS4 and Xbox One go, goes is live service games. Yes. They were kind of getting started on Xbox 360 and PS3. They were possible, but the audience wasn't open to yeah, it. Yeah, they were more now straightforward. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I guess they're open to it, but at the same time, it just keeps getting shoehorned in People everywhere. People get bitter about it. Like, they get bitter about integrated content, but... It's still there. Yeah, you can't yeah. get rid of it. It makes money. Um, Nintendo Switch is the last one. The yes. elephant in the room. There's not going to be a new hardware thing. Uh, the argument is that I feel like a lot. Look at the DS and the DS Lite, the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy SP. There have been a lot of times where Nintendo's come out with a hardware revision that has performed phenomenally. Yes. Switch does not need it. And if they do make the Switch the 2DS version where it is a compromise on the vision, I think that's too much for them to stomach. Two things. Number yep, one, uh, they have to from a security point of view. It is getting to PS2 level ease to do homebrews now. Like at least it's not PSP. That is true. Um, but it is getting it's getting so easy to do. It's yeah. getting like because it, it's an Nvidia Shield tablet. Under it all, it's a Tegra chip. Yeah. So it's just an Nvidia Shield tablet. It's it, it already had those existing flaws, and they had these like interesting transistors that every time it would. Um, update for security, it would break some of those. So you couldn't go back. Yeah. So you couldn't fuck around with it. So there's a lot of that. It still doesn't matter. People are finding ways to do it. All they do is just go, cool, don't update beyond this point. No worries, yeah. haven't done it. Um, so you just have that as, as a problem. So they have to do something. At least an internal revision, I understand. Yeah. What was your second but they might as well. But they might, what they've done, they might as well change the screen a little bit. They might as well change this a little bit. They so you reckon little, little tweaks? Little tweaks. Like, yeah, so in, okay. in the same way that you brought up the, the uh, Vita. Yeah. Vita's the same, right? Oh, you brought up PSP, but Vita, right? How it had the original OG one, and then they changed to the new one. Which was exactly slimmer, the same. lighter, better, yeah. like more ergonomic. The screen yeah. was worse, but people copped it. Yeah, so they'll, they'll change all of that because the price will go down even more. That's true. The argument for a hard, like as far as an actual change in the vision, is that the Japanese just do not play consoles. So if you're going to do that, so you need it to be more. You make portable. a handheld yeah. one. All right, and and I think that whether they announce it this year, I doubt it's going to be Christmas. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, but I reckon next year they already own the handheld market. They might as well consolidate it. That's fair. That does bring us to the end of the episode. Uh, I think that's probably one of the best ways to come to an, the end of an episode, just us arguing. Welcome yeah. to New Game Plus. Right. My God. Yeah. Um, you can check out New Game Plus in a lot of places. Where can the good people check out New Game Plus between now and next week when so, we're on? So, newgameplus.tv or Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Twitch, uh, Instagram. I think we're on Instagram. <laughs> New Game we Plus TV. We use it TV. sometimes. I don't yeah, know. Occasionally, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you can check us out on social media and all those places. Newgameplus.tv is the website. And hey, if you want to see more of me or hear more of me, you can also check out Zed Games. It is a podcast. We have a New Game Plus podcast as well. Zed Games is better. Sorry, but like, I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there. I'll put it out there. I'll cop it, whatever, right now. I'm just getting a blare. ZedGamesAU.net is where you want to go, or you can find it on iTunes and Spotify. But in the meantime, check us out on social media, and um, we will see you next week. <laughs>